So uh, it really is a pleasure uh, to be able to, uh, to come here um, to, uh, to stand in for uh, the, the Director of the Research School of Astronomy and Astrophysics, um, uh, Professor Matthew Collis, who can't be here tonight, uh, to tell you a little bit about you know, what is the GMT uh, and why it is important for Australian scientists. Now, in 10 minutes, I'm not going to be able to give you much in the way of technical detail. So if you've got any specific questions like what is the exact F ratio of the secondary or uh, how much does the Gregorian instrument rotate away, you'll have to save those to the end so I can answer them. But, but in the meantime, what I'll try to do is just give you a general picture. Now, what is the GMT? The GMT is one of a generation of new telescopes uh, that represent the next step uh, in the size of optical facility uh, that astronomers have available to them. Somewhat unimaginatively, as a class, they are known as the extremely large telescopes. This distinguishes them from the very large telescopes that we currently have. Um, but the important point to note uh, is that bigger and bigger telescopes uh, have been a history of astronomy for about the last 400 years. And the reason for that uh, is two fairly straightforward things. The first is that a bigger telescope with a larger mirror uh, catches more light in much the same way that a larger bucket catches more rain. So if you want to look for extremely faint objects, you need a very large telescope. And the second point is that bigger telescopes produce sharper images. Uh, and so I can see finer detail on the universe uh, and see smaller things nearby or alternatively uh, things that are somewhat larger much further away. Australia's largest telescope at the moment is the four metre Anglo-Australian telescope, which sits just outside Coonabarabran on Siding Spring Observatory. Uh, and it is nowadays a middle-sized telescope. The largest telescope in the, telescopes in the world uh, are the Keck telescopes in Hawaii with mirrors that are 10 metres uh, in diameter. So uh, the mirror diameter is you know, about the, the width of this room uh, in highly uh, precise uh, glass. Uh, now, for, by comparison, many of you will know about the Hubble Space Telescope and the exquisite images it produces because it's in space. Hubble is quite a small telescope nowadays. It's only a 2.5 metre telescope in size. And to sort of, because um, I'm a scientist, I have to produce lots of dots. Uh, to show you uh, this sort of progression in the size of telescopes from uh, way back in 1600 when Galileo uh, put together the first refracting telescopes, there's been quite an orderly progression from soon after that, uh, almost a, a sort of a straight line on a logarithmic plot here, uh, from uh, Herschel's uh, large uh, reflecting telescope uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the 19th century, uh, through to the 100-inch Hooker telescope uh, in California uh, on uh, Mount Wilson, to the 200-inch 5-metre Hale telescope uh, in, uh, at Palomar Observatory, where I was... Uh, privileged to be able to do some work as a graduate student, uh, through to the largest telescopes we've got at the moment, Keck. Uh, there are two of those uh, on Mauna Kea, the mountain of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. GMT uh, is the next big step. Uh, and how big a step is it? Uh, it's an extremely large step indeed. So the background here shows you a sort of a, a colour diagram of the mosaic of mirrors, seven uh, 8.4 metre diameter mirrors which will uh, collect their light uh, together uh, to give you uh, the equivalent in terms of collecting area of a single, meter, uh, a single mirror uh, that's uh, 22 metres in diameter. So that's almost three times larger, well, just over twice larger the, Keck teles the size of the Keck telescopes, almost three times larger the, than the eight metre class telescopes uh, that are around at the moment. And in particular, it uh, has a, uh, a size for when it's diffraction limited, when the optics are tuned up so that this telescope is producing the ultimate resolution images it can, equivalent to a 24.5 metre telescope. And that magic second step happens because up at the top end of the telescope, uh, off the top of this image, uh, you, you'll see lots of images of this telescope and somebody will point one out a little bit later. Off the top of these images are, are seven uh, adaptive secondary mirrors uh, that are each uh, matched to one of these primary mirrors uh, that can basically vibrate and wobble in order to take out the distortions induced by the Earth's atmosphere and, and produce a diffraction limited image. It's an, essentially an optical telescope, an optical or infrared telescope, so it counts photons, uh, and it will work from uh, 0.3 of a micron or, or 300 nanometers or 3,000 angstroms all the way up to five micron wavelengths in the infrared. 
And the total cost of the, the, uh, the facility will be around, well, it has been defined that it will be 1.05 uh, billion US dollars. And those are as spent dollars, so including inflation through to the end of the project. The exciting thing for Australia is that we are a 10% partner uh, in this project. This is a, going to be right at the forefront of international facilities uh, when it comes online. Uh, and it will see Australian astronomers collaborating uh, with some of the most preeminent uh, institutions in the world. Now, you've all seen uh, the movie uh, that was cycling through just before we started, but I think it's worthwhile to give you an idea of the scale of this project. Um, this is the enclosure, and that's the telescope. There's the, 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 the focus where the secondary mirrors are, are actually held to send light back to, through the hole in the pr primary mirror here to the instruments. That is the tractor trailer of a semi-trailer, uh, that tiny little thing down there. So this is going to be one ginormous structure. Um, I actually did the calculation. The area that's been cleared on the top of this mountain um, to put the telescope on is large enough to put the MCG on. The partnership that we're going to be involved with really does involve some of the leading astronomical institutions in the world. Uh, the uh, Carnegie Institution in Pasadena uh, which was involved in the, the, the construction and use of the Hale 200-inch telescope, for many years the largest telescope in the world, the University of Arizona, the University of Texas at Austin, uh, Texas A&M University, University of Chicago, where, of course, uh, Fermi uh, did a lot of uh, nuclear work back uh, uh, just before the war, Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory and Harvard. So these are really big-name institutions around the globe. Um, also, Kazi, the Koreans are involved, and here in Australia, uh, there are essentially two partners involved, the, the ANU, who is a 5% partner, uh, and Astronomy Australia Limited, representing the rest of the astronomical institutions in Australia, who is also a 5% partner. The telescope itself will be installed at Las Campanas Observatory in Chile, um, and Brazil, the, uh, the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil, is also a partner. So this is the place where the telescope goes. It's a southern hemisphere uh, facility. Uh, on one of the, the very best observing sites in the world. So why are we doing all this? Of course, there's no point just building a giant telescope in order to have a bigger telescope than everybody else. That would be a frightful waste of a billion dollars. We're building this because it will enable uh, the next generation of astronomers to be working at the absolute forefront of the field. So the exquisite imaging uh, that, Gemini will uh, that GMT will produce uh, will probe uh, the dark matter structure in and within uh, nearby galaxies uh, to our own and do so at a much greater distance. So we'll be able to look at the detailed structure of the dark matter in a much larger range of galaxies than we can with telescopes at the moment. The enormous aperture will enable us to detect the first light coming from the very first stars and galaxies uh, back in the early days uh, of the universe. And the ability of this telescope uh, to be a general purpose uh, it telescope with a wide suite of instruments that you'll hear a little bit more about uh, as we go on this evening, uh, will allow uh, astronomers to explore the detailed histories of how stars form uh, in these galaxies and how galaxies uh, are built up and evolve over the history of the universe. And from my point of view, the exciting part of this telescope that I want to be able to use, um, hopefully uh, just shortly before I retire, uh, is going to be uh, that the GMT's huge collecting area allows us to do uh, searches for and studies of planets around nearby stars uh, that are not simply not possible at the moment. Um, the research we do in finding planets around other stars is essentially limited by how many photons we can get from all of those stars because we have to use very uh, precise techniques to see the impact the planet has on the star. We don't actually see uh, the planets themselves. And so that takes lots and lots and lots of photons. And uh, being able to do that with an enormously larger telescope uh, with the exquisite quality of instrumentation that GMT is going to have uh, is, uh, is going to be uh, uh, groundbreaking for that field. In particular, um, this science is science that the GMT will do first before any of the other uh, generation of extremely large telescopes. So it's going to be an extremely exciting time uh, to be working on exoplanets uh, over the next next decade with also with, with this instrument. So at that point, I will stop. Uh, so that's the general background. That's why uh, we want uh, to build uh, the next generation of enormously larger telescopes. 
Uh, and the exciting thing, I think, is the fact that this is a telescope that really will enable Australian astronomers here at ANU and everywhere else around the nation uh, to be competing, to be collaborating with leading astronomers around the globe in undertaking the forefront astronomy uh, of the next generation. Thank you. Thank you.